Hi guys, welcome to another edition of Evolving Minds right here on the Creators NG. My name is Blessing Kure and I will be your host. As always, bringing you a conversation you don't want to miss out on. We've had an amazing run so far and I cannot say it has been without you. Thank you so much for your comments, your feedback, your engagements, for sharing, inviting your family and friends to join in on the conversation and I'm sure you've learned something from Sunday up until this point. Today is no exception. Um, just as always, you're set you're out for a treat and i'm sure you're going to have an amazing time as well as learn something beneficial that you could implement during this lockdown or immediately after to help boost your brand as a creative or generally in all walks of life so we will be discussing creative ways to position your brand with the lovely Idia ACN and she is a news anchor and producer with Arise TV. She is the founder of the Idia Foundation which um, disperses education and also aims to fight poverty in Nigeria as well as other African countries as well. She is a global brand, she has modeled I mean, she's a force to reckon with, so definitely this is a conversation well suited for our guest today. Um, I'm just going to go straight on to bring her on to discuss the Creative Ways version of brand. Please do ensure that you drop your comments in the comment section if you have any during the course of the show, and I'm sure she's going to go straight into it and answer them. First is you went from being an investment banker just by studying journalism. You went from being an investment banker and making transition back into entertainment. What prompted that move? Well, to be honest, um, my heart was always um, in media because I actually studied journalism and business and international business. Oh. And then I went oh. to master in like journalism basically and corporate communications. But um, I ended up at that investment um, firm because they were focused on investing in banks across Africa. So it was actually the focus that made me um, start working with them. And that company is actually the company that brought me to Nigeria four and a half years ago. Um, so it was something that actually just happened fluidly. So from one job, I was referred to another. And that's literally how I got here today. Um, when I came here with the company, um, I was approached by a producer who told me, hey, like, you know, would you like to host your own show? And I was like, what's the show about? And then he talked about how um, the show was a great opportunity um, to basically be able to talk to people about love, relationships, life, ETC. And that was one show. And that the second show would be about fashion. So that was Star 101. And the first show was You've Got Issues. We filmed the show. And for months, blessing, nothing happened. So I was like, okay. Uh, well, I was still at my um, normal private TV. What? Well, that was Spice TV at the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we had filmed in like January, but then for months I was working here with the company because at the time they were investing in banks like Union Bank and all of that, but nothing was happening. So I was like, okay, maybe this TV thing isn't going to work out after all. And then on May 17th, 2015. Yes. I saw myself on television um, anchoring that show, You've Got Issues, and I knew that I wanted to be a TV presenter. So I, I put in my resignation and I left the company on June 1st. So two weeks later, I was out of the company and I was fully focused on filming those shows. So I filmed, I worked on those shows for two years and we filmed over a hundred episodes of You've Got Issues. We also filmed about 80 something episodes of Star 101. And yeah, so that was three years. Almost two. I was happy with my job. I loved my job. And then I was poached by Arise News. And they were like, look, we're not trying to come in between you and your work that you love, but you are so smart. You've done business and all this stuff. Why don't you come and answer the news? So that was how I got on um, Arise News. And um, I was trying to juggle everything at the same time. In fact, that was my strength before. Like multitasking was my thing. So I was trying to do everything at the same time. But because they liked me on the show on Arise, it got to a point where I had to choose. Um, and then Arise was something new. I'd done Spice for three years. We had three wonderful years. And then that's how I um, started working on Global Business Reports full time. Um, it came to a point last year where I said to myself, OK, what am I going to do about the idea project? Because it's an idea that we had already dropped. But then with this full schedule that arise, I didn't actually have time 
to you know go out and shoot and do everything I was doing. So I now had to sadly say goodbye to the news for now. And we are filming the entire season. I'm working on releasing that before I go back on the news. So, okay, so you're taking a break from the news to handle Idia Idia project. Yes, there's literally there's no other way. <laughs> there's no other way. When you're a TV actor, mm. one of that's actually my dream job. It was my dream job. I loved it. I have a good relationship well everywhere that I've worked, to be honest. But it was my dream job. But you also realize that it takes up so much time to work on the news. You are looking over your script, you're editing, you're making sure you don't get on TV and say nonsense because it's all live. So yeah. It was fun for me. Exactly. And they came for me a lot, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So how were you able to you have an amazing personal brand? How were you able to create that brand? How does one create a personal brand? To be honest, I think the most important thing when it comes to having a brand or creating a brand that people don't realize is don't focus on creating a brand. Like with what you do, you're fantastic, right? And all you need to do is keep doing it consistently. Oops, I'm so sorry. My stand is very fantastic. Anyway, so all you need to do is keep doing what you're doing consistently. And eventually, like, you just realize that your story is interesting to tell. We had times where, you know, the people I worked with, like, maybe else South Africa would reach out to them and say, oh, let's do something on fashion on this girl. And then they would read my background and they're like, no, we have to do a full story. This girl was in finance, was in this, was in that. So putting your head down and doing the work gives people an interesting story to tell about you. I don't know if that makes any sense. So That makes, that makes sense. Yeah. So like a diverse story. Yeah, so you notice that a lot of people here want to focus on, oh, um, what magazine am I going to be in or how many followers am I going to have? And, and for me, it's never been about that. I don't, I don't think that that's important at all. I think when you put in the work, you get rewarded, period. So everything is a result of your work that you've put in, of hard work. Otherwise, you know, you're wasting your time trying to build a brand that is smokes and mirrors and isn't even there. Okay. So you did mention in a lot of things. How do you harness all these things? How do you cope? I'm fit into all these at different times. Yeah, but you look at people like Beyonce, you look at like people all over the world and you're like, they have the same 24 hours that we do. So it's not as if it's something that's easy or a superpower, but it's just something that you have to do. Let's all be honest. A lot of times people say they're busy, but you realize that for six hours in the day, maybe you're on Instagram or maybe you're having lunch with your friends. Cut that stuff out. There'll be time for that. Like when the rewards are coming in, you'll have time to go out with your friends. So I had to make a lot of sacrifices. In my uni days, I was always working two jobs. I never, I, I was not dating. I wasn't socializing. I wasn't in any sororities. I didn't have time for any of that. So it was a lot of sacrifice, like social sacrifices. And now people call me a socialite. So there's a time for everything. Basically. Okay, so you gave up social then to be a futuristic social. <laughs> right. You get what I mean, but yeah, not quite. <laughs> okay, what's the most detrimental thing a person can do to their personal brand? I think the most detrimental thing you can do to your personal brand is stop before thinking. I mean, you see a lot of stuff on sites and you know that people just people just say some things like they're having a, a brain fart it just makes no sense like you give your opinion on something i mean look what happened with trump yesterday talking about like injecting disinfectants into your body you know i think the most ridiculous thing you can do to your personal brand is talk about stuff that you're not an expert in because if you don't know what you're talking about people will know it will show so i guess yeah. just be authentic because if you're not it will be so obvious Okay. Um, criticism. You are in the public eye a lot. You have been for such a long time. Um, since your you started modeling quite early, which did put you out there really early. You had done TV and you been on the runway, so your business is in people's eyes. How do you feel both personal, professional, and is there any body shaming here and there? How do you feel about that? Honestly. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit lucky because I get criticized a lot, but I get criticized about things that, I mean, I have it easy compared to some people, I'll be honest, because 
um, it hurts a lot and it's very hard to manage because the things that you think are so easy, oh, I'm going to do this thing, I'm not going to get into any trouble, you wake up, you're on a blog and you're like, what? Like, that was literally supposed to be the easiest interview ever or whatever. Um, so there's some things that you can't help. But in terms of, like, being personally criticized, you know, I've gotten a lot of messages in my, in my time. Oh, you're not a good presenter, which is a lie. Um, oh, your nose is so big. Like, somebody wrote something to me recently and they were like, you feel fine if not for your nose. You know, stuff like that. It's really painful. You read it and you're like, wow, this person is a horrible person. Um, or people say stuff like, oh, you know, this has happened with your body. Your body used to look like this. Your body looks like that. And it's just like, I was, I was, I see myself as somebody that was more like focused and whatever. And I just happened to be pretty. I'm not a pretty girl that happened to be smart. So when people want to talk about like relationships, my body, this one, that one, I don't really pay attention to it because that's not, that may be what you're seeing, but it's not what I'm trying to sell to you. Like, that's your problem. I don't really care, you know? So I do get a lot of criticism about my body, my presenting and stuff like that. But it's one of those things where I used to roll and cry on the floor about it before. And I've come to a point where people are going to say what they want to say. I actually have a funny story. Two weeks ago, uh, I wrote something mm -hmm. and they, they had a post. I don't know if you saw the post that Trevor Noah had with Bill Gates. Um, the um, the interview they did just like this, like you know, just chatting, and he was asking Gates how Gates knew about the whole exactly how the corona thing was going to happen and whatever. And I now wrote, Gates is a forward thinker. He's somebody that is always thinking about issues that affect the globe. Period. Do you understand? And when we were supposed to be worried about health, people were focused on you know stupid things like Brexit and trade wars all through last year. And somebody comes, I wake up in the morning, and somebody's written, you don't have the range to discuss Brexit. And I'm like, what? So you will find people like that, that no matter what you do, they don't know anything about you. I spent a year talking about Brexit and trade wars on the news. I spent a year researching and following those stories. But at the end of the day, people know what they know. Do you know what I mean? So we're in a profession where people are never really going to do their research and know everything you've done. And there's nothing you can do about that. So sometimes that kind of criticism, I would say, gets to me more than criticizing me about my body or my nose or whatever. Yeah, I think it's more when it's intellectual. It's very painful. I almost died. <laughs> your nose is getting a lot of love in the comments. They say oh. you're perfect. I love the way you are. I love your nose. I love your body. You are perfect. You're beautiful. So there's a lot of love. Oh, thank you, guys. For thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, about that, you're a beautiful person and Thank you are intelligent, right? Is there a pretty girl stereotype? Well, there's that stereotype that, oh, you know, if you're pretty, you don't know anything or this or that. But the reason why I don't care about it as much now in Nigeria is because I have it even easier here. Imagine abroad where you would sit down preparing presentations and when these arab guys are asking questions they're looking right through you and they're asking your boss the questions they're asking the men the questions nobody it's almost like you're invisible most of the time if you are a powerful woman you're intellectual you've achieved a lot people expect you to not wear makeup to look a certain way maybe to have natural hair and you know no no flashy lipstick no earrings you know there's a there's a look um and then if you look like kim kardashian Oh my God, who does she think she is to go to law school or whatever? So people, people have a stereotype and they, and they don't realize that a lot of beautiful women, I mean, look at you, you're beautiful. A lot of beautiful women have broken those stereotypes every day, but they force us into that box. They're like, no, you must be in this box. You can't be smart. You can't be, you can't be this, you can't be that. They see you with a really nice car or really, oh, a man must have done, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. No, you can't do it. You can't afford it. And I'm like, what? I was driving past um, this building. There's a massive like a shopping center in Ikoi. And I was driving past the building. And of course, I know the person that owns the building. It's a girl, but she's, she was really young at the time, maybe 24. She, her father owns the land, and she decided to develop something there. But I was in a car. And somebody now said, mm, Ron's girls have struck again. And you're just thinking, 
what about what about the rich people in Nigeria? Don't they have children? Do you know what I mean? So just seeing somebody as a presenter or whatever doesn't mean that they don't have a family or pedigree or whatever. They think we're all just struggling. We're all just hungry. We're all just looking for a husband or somebody to marry us or somebody to save us. And yes. To save us. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't tell help us with the missus. Like, ah, help gift us a It's crazy. That's, that's a conversation. <laughs> okay, guys, if you have a question, please drop it in the comment section so we um, address it as we go. There's a there's okay, Laura says there's a different um there's definitely a stereotype. People expect women to sit and look pretty. It's an inferiority complex um that other people have because they're threatened by the fact that uh, women are powerful. So yeah, I totally agree with that. How do you deal with competition? With what competition? Yes. The only thing you can do, so for me, I don't know about other people, but me, I get excited by competition. If I see that a dad posts a fan picture, then me too, I'm doing photo shoots. I like it because, honestly, the new kind of competition is also partnership. If everybody's talking about blessing, blessing, we're doing a photo shoot together. Do you understand? I don't, I, I don't think, I think you'd be pretty crazy to want to be the only God in what you do. And I think the minute you're the biggest person in the room, you stop growing. So there's no point. If I feel like, oh, I've kind of done pretty well in, pre in TV presenting, then I want to do more. I want to do something else. I don't want to sit there and be like, oh, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. It's ridiculous. That is inferiority complex, in my opinion. Wanting nobody else to be lifted up to your level. So I think competition is a great thing. I welcome all the TV presenters into the industry. I think it gets people off their asses. Now, you have to now think about how to stay relevant. You have to think about... Am I producing a show? What Am I moving into a different territory? If I was hosting sports, am I going to now start doing entertainment? It gets people on their feet, and I really like that. So, okay. How do you, um, you said it gets, how do you stay relevant then? Is it by moving, as you mentioned? How do I stay relevant? Well, yes. For me, like, since I was a young girl, I've had a lot of dreams. And um, my biggest thing has always been Parable of the Talents. I think that we are supposed to use every single thing God has given us. But I don't think you can do everything. I've tried, trust me. And I don't think you can do everything at the same time. So I think while you're working on stuff um, bit by bit, you have to make sure that you develop something fully first and then now move into something else gradually. You know, like you introduce one product, people are liking the product, okay, guess what? I sell this as well. You know what I mean? So I think yeah. you can become a master of something and then transition into something else and that's what i've tried to do all my life i don't know if it's working guys but i think it's working <laughs> i think it's working because they're, they're so in love with you in the comment section oh thank you guys thank you thank you thank you okay <laughs> the wall street act wow <laughs> you see it i told you uh, <laughs> Oh, I'm beautiful girls by pearls. Uh, many out there. We agree. Thank you. Uh, okay. It's just competition is healthy as long as you feel that you're bettering yourself and not trying to outdo other people. Exactly. I think that's what you said about partnering too. Partnering with more people as well. Yeah, and I think betterment of an industry, as long as you're not like competing for who a guy is going to think is finer and all that kind of nonsense, because really, who men is? Very <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so you have worked to some of the biggest brands, and your endorsement with Remy Martin, I think, is the most recent. Yes, 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 yes. Congratulations on that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, how do you? Land such big, big, no, not big Nigerian names. I'm saying big global names. How do you do that? To be honest, that has, I think that has been the most exciting part of my move back to Nigeria. It's that growing up, I always wanted to be a model. Now, funny story, I was too fat, right? I was too fat and nobody would use me for shows. Eventually, when I got to New York, and this is like by the time I had my master's, whatever, I was working so much that I now finally became very skinny. 
And that's when I now got signed proper and started getting jobs, which is the strangest thing. Because when you want it, it's not coming. And then all of a sudden, you're getting booked. And I was like, okay, this is not bad. You look stressed and suddenly you are trimming off. Yeah. And then you don't get to a point where people, you're also like, uh, but my goals have kind of changed. So now I actually do want to be a journalist. I want to report about business, stuff affecting the economy, countries, stuff like that. So my mindset has changed. Then you come to Nigeria, right? And then from TV presenting, you're getting to work with these brands that people told you you would never model for. And now you're not just modeling, but you have a sort of like a name and a voice to go with it. Because we've seen a lot of famous models internationally that will be on the face of a campaign, but they'll be the face of a campaign, but they won't write their names. And now you come to a point where you're doing these things and people are like, oh, that's that TV presenter. You know, so it's funny how God works. And it goes back to my former point of just doing the work and the benefits must come. It's a law of nature. Like, I never sat down and said, oh, I'm going to sit down and do my makeup until a makeup company. I don't do it. If you even look at my page, I'm the worst. I don't know how to do my hair that well. I don't know how to do makeup. So this hair game literally started from when I got signed with Cuckoo's Hair. I had no idea what I was doing in terms of hair. As of last how year, you, how, how, how do you have a hair game when you're signed to a hair company? How is it working? No, so that's what I'm saying. Like, I was not look at my hair. Another girl would have curled her hair for all her interviews, she would be on point. She, I am just taking every day at a time, and I think that's part of why they wanted to work on me. They said, This one does not care, she needs help. So I'm literally somebody that they were like, Oh, if we give her all this makeup, so Lancome is like, If we give her all this money, we give her all this makeup. She could literally be relatable because there are a lot of women like me that work a lot, they're busy, and we can learn and just figure it out together. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't just some girl that, oh, I had makeup tutorials and I'm so good at it. People want people they can relate to, not just, ah, this one wakes up perfect. Do you know what I mean? Which I do not. So I literally had to put makeup on because I'm now breaking out from COVID anxiety. I don't know why, but I've been really anxious this period. So thank you, Lord. Hold on, let's do that. Anxious, because you don't know what's going to happen when we get out. You don't know. I mean, what if brands say when they're in their budget? Another source of anxiety is when are we getting out? Exactly. 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 <laughs> Okay, guys, so please drop your question. Um, okay, Lima says, shopping, once you find a platform, it's um, you will springboard to other stuff. Gift, James says, not as much as we know there are stereotypes and do not align with them, but sometimes we unconsciously tend to conform to them. How yeah. can we break free? So, do you know what I think? I don't think that you should wake up trying to be different or trying to break a stereotype. I think people have callings and purpose and i think that you should be your your life goal should be to follow your dreams i mean who gives a damn who's the person making all these decisions telling us that oh we're smart or we're not smart or we're doing this or we're not who's calling the shots you should be calling the shots in your life so for me i think waking up and saying to myself okay i want to do this i'm interested in journalism i'm interested in media as a whole right i'm interested in maybe acting maybe i'm it's not a head because it's actress. Really you know, like you almost like an actress. You do just have the air. Look into it soon. <laughs> Thank you. You have all these little interests here and there. Okay, fashion. Okay, traveling. So you can touch on all these things if you wanted to, right? And you have your interests. And yes, you know when food becomes a big thing, everybody decides they want to. They seem to be interested in food blogging. Or when they see that fashion is reaching, you know, international borders, everybody becomes a fashionista. And maybe that's where we think we're playing into the stereotypes. But there's nothing wrong with, you know how women like to look pretty because it increases your confidence. Really? One man now comes and says, because you're taking pictures, oh, you're a bimbo, or you're a wrongs girl, or you're a, who cares? Who, I mean, why are these people making the rules for us? Do what you want to do. If you like your fashion, please, by all means, get dressed, post about your fashion. If you like your news, post about your news. I don't think that we should be worried about the stereotypes per se. Because I've always followed the phase I'm in. 
If I was on the news, it was only Arise I was posting. When I took a break from Arise, it was India Project I was posting. When I started getting all these influencer jobs and all these um, um, endorsements, that's what I've been posting. I stay true to the phase I'm in. I don't try to be anything I'm not. And I think that's very important because if you're not doing that, you're under pressure. I don't know if that makes sense. Don't ever talk too much. Tell me. <laughs> no, 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 you're not talking too much. Good. I think they needed some of this point. I'm sure she has gotten the explanation that she needed. Yeah. Someone is Miss Idia as a Remy Martin ambassador, which of their brands do you think tastes better? Yo, so I I am personally in love with the XO bottle. Since I was a very little girl, I've always loved the bottle. It's like, you know, goals. But then taste wise, I love the seventeen thirty eight. And everybody that I has ever come to visit me or whatever that tries it, it's always like, this is fantastic. So I, I would say the 1738. So Prince, I hope she has answered your question. 1738, go and get, can you get yourself 17? If you have it at home, you could just toast to that. <laughs> but if you don't, social distancing. Um, okay, I think it's important to be intentional about everything you do. Yes, you've stressed on that. A lot. So, um, oh my God, tomorrow is too good for acting. <laughs> too good for <laughs> stereotypes. Okay. Anyway, depends on the genre. Let's just let's just skip right past that. Yeah. You are clearly a secure the bag. Your fulfillment driven, of course, but you don't drop the bag. You don't leave any bag for pit. Never. In the year of securing the bag. What are your most, oh, mercy, most valid pointers that you would give fellow securing the bag gang members? How do you secure the bag? So, I have very difficult conversations that a lot of people are usually scared to ask. So, for instance, sometimes an opportunity comes to you, and a lot of people always think, if I don't take this opportunity, what if I don't get another opportunity again, or what if this doesn't happen to me? No. I ask the difficult questions, right? Unless it's a company. I have a list of dream companies I've always wanted to work for. Dream brands. So unless it falls within that dream brand, there's no way I'm working for free and there's no way I'm shortchanging myself. Again, this applies to people that have to an extent paid their dues. So for me, I have done free work. And this is like when I was in my early 20s, when I was in my early teens, my dad used to be so mad. Why are you there? Like, you're not from this, 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 you know, that kind of thing. So I've done free work. I feel like I've, I've, I've worked for the, the, to be in a position where I can now say, how much are you paying me? And a lot of people are scared to have difficult conversations. You have to ask people those questions, but you also have to tell them what you're bringing to the table. And for me, um, sometimes I notice that women are very shy to ask for what they deserve. You're not going to secure the bag if you're going around acting like, eh, this is such a big opportunity. I cannot turn it down. It doesn't matter. If one opportunity does not work out, one thing I know about life, no matter who you are, is even in the Bible. There are seasons for everything. Opportunity comes to all. The race is not to the swift. That's a very, very important Bible passage. The race very is not much. to the swift. Good things come to everybody. So for me, I tell myself, this might have been a fantastic opportunity, but for me to give my time and my energy to this thing, if, if I can't have the amount I'm asking for or under certain conditions that I think will help me work better, it's not an opportunity for me. And sometimes a good opportunity may not be an opportunity for you. But a lot of people are scared to tell themselves that. Okay, so a good opportunity may not be good for you. Yep. That's a difficult conversation to have with yourself, though. Uh, it's very, very difficult. But for me, I've had that conversation. I've turned down jobs that I'm like, Idia, you're finished. Idia, you're finished. <laughs> <laughs> like, funny story about Remy Martin. So this Remy Martin thing, the way it happened was so interesting. Because two years ago, I was negotiating with a drink brand. So I had a company that I was sort of like, um, I, I work in wine and spirits, right? My family does. That's what we, we are focused on. So I had a company that I could have easily like been a brand ambassador for, right? I 
at that time, they said, no, I have to put in the work. I have to earn the name. I said, no problem. I now had another drink that came to us. And they were like, oh, we're going to give you a billboard. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And I said, okay, but well, how much am I being paid? I can't tell you people the amount because you people will love me off the system. And these people are saying, yeah, but we're going to take you to South Africa. We're going to say, I said, I'm sorry, going to South Africa is not my problem. I've been everywhere. In, name, a, name a city. I've been everywhere. So I don't need, I need to be paid in cash for this job. In addition to those trips to educate people about the drink. And they went, do you know, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Do you know what the woman said to me? She said, Idia, you're doing very well in your career. But if you don't take this opportunity, guess what? People will say this is somebody that could have made it. But it just never happened for her. When she said that thing, I said, thank you so much. I respectfully declined. And I left that office. As in, this is like, when you more people, okay, I walked out. And not in a disrespectful way, but I was like, thank you guys so much. I think I don't have anything else to say to prove my case. I gave you a proper presentation of what I was bringing to the table. And let's not say you can't afford me. You kind of want to cheat me, let's be honest, right? So I, I just told myself, it's not for you. Till today, that drink has not done anything. They've not gotten a brand ambassador. They've, they've not done anything. So sometimes so you may think, what she said turned on them. Yeah. So you may think, and I saw the girl. I didn't even realize it. I didn't even recognize her because I don't hold grudges. I saw her last um, last year, September. And she said, do you remember me? And I said, no. She said, I was at that meeting the year before that, you know, you turned down the money, blah, 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 blah. Thanks to you, I lost my job. I said, how did you lose your job? They said she had to land Idia ICN and she couldn't get me. So they were like, oh, she's not capable of getting them, the ambassador they want for them. They were trying to shortchange me and make me think I needed them when they needed me. And that at that time, I had no single endorsement, nothing. Look at what happened a year later. All these other brands, Lancome, Remy Martin, Cuckoo's Hair, Be Natural Spa, everything just started coming. And they didn't come with names, they came with money. And that's important. Okay. So, to secure the bag, don't shortchange yourself. Yes. This year, we're still about the bag, of course. Whether lockdown or not, we're still, 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 still. still. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, okay, so I'm going to check for more questions in the comments. Guys, drop your questions if you have any. I think it's because there's a stigma attached to women feeling like they're always asking for too much, like you said. You should never shortchange yourself. Okay, absolutely. Tom says, want me my check. <laughs> I should be um, asking for people's names. <laughs> you should. There are hundreds there. So, um, someone says, uh, your contract is worth the value, um, as you say it is. No need to be shy, shy away from difficult conversation. Funny enough, how you handle the difficult conversation um, determines okay. how seriously people will take you. Yes. So, hmm. how seriously you people will take you. I think that's that's really important. It's really important to have those difficult conversations. But also, <laughs> there's a lot of, <clears throat> there's a lot of bickering on trying to stay in public eye. Mm -hmm. Like trying to stay relevant. Mm -hmm. You say it's okay to do any and everything to stay in the news. No, ne me, I would never, ever, ever say that, God forbid. So for me, I think, I think, I don't think if you really want to do what you're doing long term, I don't think you should just disappear and nobody's heard from you or whatever. If you, if you go away to think about a new strategy to do something, that's absolutely fine. But when you come, come correct. A lot of Nigerians always think that, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm staying out of public eye, I'm getting off social media, everybody thinks social media is the devil, so... I'm off social media, and I was off social media for a month, you know, and then you come back. What were you working on? Nothing. You, you just, I don't know how to explain it. You come back, you're not even particularly creating any content. You're not coming back to say, oh, I took a course. You know, it's just living with nothing, coming back with nothing. It's kind of like, okay, I didn't even know you left because I didn't know what you were, what I was getting before you left the scene. I don't know what I'm getting now that you're back. And that's a mistake that I think a lot of people make. Again, it's not by force, but if it's something you're serious about, like I will use Beyonce as an example, and this is just an example. Everybody's not Beyonce. But look at how this woman will come out and drop an album, then disappear. 
she's disappeared for she's not irrelevant she's just left you with stuff to talk about to enjoy you know to simmer down on and then she comes back again but she comes back with something again that she's releasing whether it's a perfume a movie and then she goes back again so i think i think those are i mean i think that she's a good way and look at oprah does it as well oh i'm leaving um the oprah when show sure it's ending or whatever and the next thing she's launching a network called old or she's stepping back and the next thing she's focused on this global initiative stuff like that have something you know that that you're leaving people with and have something that you're announcing when you're coming back in my own opinion um somebody that i would say does it really well is osas um osas ajibade I feel like Osas is constantly reinventing herself. She's very beautiful. She's shown a lot of women that oh, just because you get married or or you have a baby, it doesn't mean that life has to end. And to be honest, Nigerian society almost treats you like ah, once you're married, you're not sexy again, or we're not we're not looking for you. Do you know what I mean? Like there's a way people praise you. When you get... <laughs> there's a way people praise you when you get married. But the truth is that they're kind of praising you because now okay, great, you're less of a threat to us. Do you know what I mean? You're less of a threat to us. Ah, now we can praise you because I can put you on any cover. You're not going to chase my husband. So that's fine because you're married. You're taken, right? And then she comes back again. And each time she comes out more beautiful, more powerful. And I think it's something that I really admire. So if there was one person I would tell people to watch, I think somebody like her and her career path. She always has a brand she's working with. She always has something that she's speaking up for. And I think just having a purpose, a drive, something that people can follow you along with is helpful in terms of staying relevant. If you're not acting at that time, what are you doing? Are you giving to maybe widows? Are you focused on, you know, building a company? Whatever it is, just communicate to your followers. Don't disappear on them. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yes. Uh, Adi Dine says it's called power of marketing. Of course, everybody needs marketing as a person or as a brand. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get back. My she says journalism student and looking to branch into the media world. What advice would you give her? Um, she wants to branch into. Okay, so I think it depends on what she's currently studying. Anybody. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. She studied journalism. And she's trying to branch into the media world. She is in the media world. Okay, so when we were journalism students, what did we do? Can she get an internship? Can she get a part-time job? My first um, part-time job when I was in Nigeria and I wanted to study journalism was I went to Punch newspaper and I begged them and I literally started writing random stories. And I was very young. I was like 15 or 16 or something. And I think I had to stop because I was now leaving to the states for school so go up to people and literally tell them that you want to learn from them and when i mean people when i say learn from people a lot of people always think i'm saying go and learn from celebrities no you need things on your resume that when people see your resume they are seeing microsoft they are seeing you know punch newspaper they're seeing this day you need things that will take you to the next level forget about celebrities and their closets and things like that do you understand? You want to be able to show people your resume and they take you seriously. So look for companies that are established. If you want to be in journalism, then you're looking for radio stations. Tell um, a producer and don't tell a presenter because if you want to get into journalism, the first thing you want to do is have your own show. Most people already assume you're not a serious person. Do you understand? None of us started on screen. It's impossible. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's kind of like, okay, you're you have to get your oh, okay, yeah. door. So, so, parts in. Exactly, exactly. So what were you doing before? Amanpoa is so exciting to watch because this woman was, was an intern. She was behind the camera before. You know, a lot of journalists, they've been on the field. When I did um, a stint at the United Nations, you would literally see people there that they worked in. You see people working in the headquarters in the, in the New York Secretariat building. And you're thinking, oh, this is a nice coaching job. No, these people worked in the field. So they sent them to Burundi for three years. They sent them to Central African Republic. They send you to Guatemala, wherever. When you earn your stripes there and you sit in that secretariat, people think of you differently than, oh, you know, I just live down the streets. Nobody cares about anybody that just walked into a station. People care about people that wrote before, that have produced. So go to a producer or somebody that is seasoned that can give you real experience. 
Do you know what I mean? So she should be looking at radio stations that she can sort of intern or shadow somebody at. She should be looking at like TV platforms. Don't, not all these small online, oh, let me go and quickly write for one small blog. No, except you're actually trying to own a blog. I would say, I would say spread your wings and, and go for very established platforms first so that you can build your resume properly. Now, if I hear that somebody has worked at Business Day, what? We want to work with them at the Idea Project. Do you know what I mean? If I hear that somebody has worked at Punch or Arise or something like that, I'm like, okay, this person has done the work. But when you're just like, oh, please, ma, please, ma, let me shadow you. Shadow me and you do what? What are you going to be doing? Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to sit down and teach you how to write. Like, nobody has that kind of time. So there are institutions and establishments for that. And I think she should take a, um, she should take advantage of that because that's why a lot of these people have stations where they have the capacity to train people. Also, most universities, I don't know how it is in Nigeria, but most universities outside, they always have like a, a student's TV channel, like for news, or they always have like a student's radio broadcast office, stuff like that. You know, try to write for your school paper, things like that. Have that kind of experience. And then it's even easier to work walk into those establishments I've talked about. If you now work for those establishments, you can come and work for someone like Anna Sass, and she won't think you're an imbecile. She'll be like, oh, wow, this person knows what they're doing. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Do the work, basically. Okay, Laura, so she has given you details and examples of places you can start looking into to help yourself. Um, okay, he's Limas is saying Adele, Adele does it too, gives you a hello, goes for four years, and then comes back with a ban and stays relevant. Esther Williams says, I think social media is a very good tool in making one relevant, especially as celebrities. But some people use it for drama, deceit, lies, just in a bit to stay relevant. I don't know. Unless you feel like I do that, then I can explain. But if you don't feel like I do that, I don't know. I can't speak for anybody else. I have no idea. You just, yeah, we're just going to skip. Uh, okay, she says, I've done an internship. And it wasn't as rewarding as it should have been. A lot of organizations in Nigeria do not give the experience that you should have. And my love, then try another one. You don't try one or two. So this is another thing that is even also common, um, Laura. You try one thing, it's not working for you. That's why you have to work at a few places so that you know what you're looking for. I know how many places I've had to work out before work at, before I realized that, oh my God, like, this anchoring job that people think is so easy that I did on Arise, a business show, it was very, very hard. It's not it's not wake up and read a piece of paper. The last thing you want to do in your life, if I can ever advise you and take it, the last thing you want to do in your life is read a script that somebody hands to you without proofreading that script. You will go and see the end, you'll make a new sense of yourself. I think in fact I think that's what happens to Trump. I don't know. Just like you have to be able to write your own scripts. You have to be able to say, oh, no, this is wrong. It's not 48 people that died. I read it. It's 42. You know, you have to know your shit. And unless you work at different places, you're not going to get to that point. Do you know what I mean? When you're like, yes. you be enough to know, no, this is not the right number. You won't, you won't get it in a week of sitting down somewhere. And also, most times when people enter somewhere, if they are trying to get close to maybe a producer or an anchor or whoever, the person doesn't have time to them, oh, I hate working at that place. It wasn't fulfilling or whatever. Mm -mm. There's something to learn from every place. Why did you start working there in the first place? Ask them, say, hey, can I do this? Can I write a story about this? Or can I take on this project? Do you know what I mean? Do stuff yes. that you know will help you, that is beneficial to you, because there's something to learn everywhere. I have learned a lot from even foolish people. There are some people that when they're talking, are like, ugh, but you know what you entered that room to get from them, and you get it, and you walk out. So there's something to learn everywhere. Okay, so Laura, I'm just to add a little to what she said. Most times, I think, I've met a couple of presenters that would say, oh, I went to volunteer at this place, and they are using me. Yeah. Like, oh, I work for free. They don't give me nothing. My name isn't always on the script that I worked on. I would do the research, and somebody would slap their name on it. It's not yeah. okay. Sometimes it's part of the To help, <laughs> to, to help. 
but I think oh. it's a gradual is a very gradual process. Mm-hmm. Um, who is this? Kinetic Beauty says on behalf of me and the entire Kardashians, we love you both. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to you and your Kardashian family. Um, okay, so Prince is saying, how do you balance your work and personal life? Work and personal life? I mean, do I have a, I mean, for me, I only, I only emphasize the things I want people to know. So, unless like you are a hater, 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 you know, that I was going to make up something. Nobody knows who I'm dating, what I'm dating. Nobody knows, unless I'm showing you my family and things like that, nobody knows my, my day-to-day job, like the stuff that I'm genuinely working on. Do you understand what I mean? So keep your private life private. I see a lot of celebrities and people that all their laundry is outside for everybody to see. And I can't judge anybody because everybody's path is different. I don't see myself as a celebrity. I don't see myself as an influencer. I just happen to be someone that is influencing based off of having been a TV presenter for long and now working with brands. I didn't wake up and want to be a socialite or whatever it is. So for me, I always, I've always been able to keep my private life private and emphasize or show the things I want to show, whether it's fashion or whatever it is. Um, when I first came to Nigeria, I remember um, I was always posting my work, my work, and people were complaining, ah, it's only work, your page is boring, you know, that kind of thing. And I also used to post travel because I didn't even officially move back to Nigeria until after two years of working here. That's when I went to New York and brought my stuff back. So I didn't even officially move. So I was always traveling a lot. And I remember they were like, look, your page is not going to do as well until you start posting fashion. And I was like, me, get dressed and write outfit of the day. Never gonna happen. Listen, <laughs> look at me now. <laughs> you, will think I'm, you will think this is my job. Do you know what I mean? But it's also something that really, I think grew my page because a lot of people connect to, people like fashion, they like style. And then it connects you to people outside of Nigeria. Do you know what I mean? So I think it helped me in certain ways. Um, and yeah, so just balancing that is realizing that this is what I want my life to be and this is what I want my work to be. My work is to come online, entertain people so that I can, you know, have a stable page where I can advertise for the brands I work with. That's my job in terms of Instagram and social media. But my personal life, who I love, who I marry, all that, nobody's business. Who I fought with, who my best friend was and is nobody's business nobody cares do you know what i mean so stop forcing people to care about things that are not important that's what i so that's how i balance it okay. compartmentalize everything compartmentalization very important we're preaching the gospel okay i hope she's answered your question um so can you go guys you guys go live like every day you guys are amazing <laughs> thank you um this says if you got a partner that is bad energy to your career path, like the person, or you really like this person, how do you balance it? I've had that before, and to be honest, you can't. So you can only stomach something for so long. I um, I think I've tried to convince somebody in the past that all oh, um, how do you say TV girls or actresses or whatever it is, people in the entertainment industry are not just um you know what they say about women or whatever, like they're not loose or whatever. And I tried my best, but you just have to know your value. Do you deserve somebody that you have to be assuring every day? Like, uh, I don't know how to say it in Yoruba. Yoruba is tricking me to say it. <laughs> like, you know, Yoruba is it's it's right. Right. Like, uh, I don't have time and energy to convince anybody that, oh, I'm this person, I'm that person. And then there are also a lot of people that will look down on my job or when they want to chase me, they'll say something like, oh, I don't usually chase TV presenters. But once a guy says that to me, I'm not interested in your energy. Do you know what I mean? Because you're going to spend the rest of your life convincing that guy that you're a good person and this and that. And it turns out to not be worth it. So, um, yeah, 
if, if, if the person is bad energy for your career, it's up to you. Like, is if, I'm not saying if you know, somebody should come after you, you should turn Prince Harry down for your job. It depends on the job, I beg. And it depends on what you want. So, again, is this person what you really want, career, what you really want? It depends on your priorities. Don't go and break up your marriage and say, idiot said. So, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, Esther Williams is asking, oh, where did this comment disappear to? Is it, is it the media personality one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. I don't know. She said different voice. Is she talking about voice or accents? Voice TV presenting and the real you talking. Okay, so I think she's trying to inquire about presenters having a certain type of voice and mm -hmm. the, the, from their talking voice. She's asking if it's um it has always it's been a misconception. I don't really know from this. I think okay, so there's two things. So I'll talk about both. I'll just talk about the presenting voice because there's a tone. And then I'll talk about accents. So in terms of the presenting voice, when you're presenting, you're most likely to project. So hello, everybody. Good evening. My name is Elia I see and da, da, da. You're trying to sound more serious. When you're talking to people, you want them to pay attention. So you can't be slouching and look like you're sleeping. So like how you are sitting now, you're sitting in a more upright position because you're the interviewer. I don't know if that makes any sense. So you have to project your voice differently. So yes, when you project, you're definitely going to sound different. For instance, if you just wake up, right, and somebody, if somebody calls you and you just wake up, they'll be able to tell that you just woke up. I don't know if that makes any sense, because you're lying down or whatever. But when you're projecting, you're going to sound different. So yes, it is necessary to project when you're talking, and you will sound like you're taking on a different voice or accent. Then in terms of accents, I think there is a platform for everybody. So a lot of people have complained to me that, oh, everybody um, that they hire has an accent or this or that. I don't think I have an accent. I have a, um, is it called a universal? So I have a neutral English accent. Yeah, I do have an American accent, but there's no point of, I don't see the point of talking to people in Nigeria in an American accent. I've always thought it was quite daft. So for me, the most important thing is being able to be understood or you're not communicating. Look at who you're talking to. The people you're talking to, do they really right now need to be hearing a British accent that they can't understand? If the answer is no, please drop it. Do you know what I mean? So look at the audience you're talking to, look at the platform you're on, and you'll know how to communicate to that audience. Okay, Carlin, I think she has answered the question on accents. Yeah. Um, she can ask to do so even if yes you know you want to be a tv presenter or whatever what kind of presenting are you interested in if it's sports etc then you know that okay you're working with like sports stations etc don't run around in circles um and honestly if there's any advice i can give people that um that maybe i wish i knew earlier if i could do something differently it would be to not be as, as I, I, I tried a lot of things, but that's because that was the kind of person I was. But I'm seeing now that it might be better to work at the place for maybe five years, maybe six years. Um, we, we tend to be in a hurry in our generation to say, oh, I've done it. I'm starting my own thing. Not everybody is meant to be an entrepreneur. And sometimes you have to tell yourself the truth, you know. So are you a good manager? 
do you really have the funds to start this thing you want to start? You know, things like that. I think the first step is being honest about the path you're going to take. If you're honest about that path, then you'll know if you're supposed to, you know, work here or there. You'll know if you're supposed to eventually start your own thing or not. You'll know if you've gotten enough experience. So I would always say have the specific goal in mind and then work backwards as opposed to just trying everything and trying to figure out where you end up. So I think what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying in some ways, be intentional. Yeah. So be intentional. Thank you very much for your time this evening. It's such a delight thank working. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. We hope that when we call you next time, you will join our live. Okay, do thank have a good night, friends. Yes, I will. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. 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 Hi guys, that has been an amazing session and very insightful as well. Thank you very much for your comments um, and for your engagement, for your questions as well. I hope you picked something out of this particular session. It's been Evolving Minds brought to you by the Creatives NG. Creatives NG is an initiative that brings creatives from all walks of life in Nigeria to come together, like create together and just improve the creative space together as one. So yes, I have been your host, Blessing Kure. Don't forget to follow the Creatives NG page. We have another interview tomorrow that you do not want to miss out on. Trust me, this guest is one that you don't want to miss out on. Following up from today's conversation about personal branding, tomorrow is definitely going to be together with it just in line we started this on sunday and today is our fifth day um we had on sunday we spoke about getting evolving or getting left behind on monday we spoke about uh, placing value on your skills on tuesday we spoke about business mistakes startups made and this conversation has evolved from there and we had she girl on here to talk to us about um harnessing your different talents and then today we I've spoken with Idia, so it's been an amazing time with you. Thank you very much. Do keep a date with us by 7 p.m. tomorrow, 7 to 8. And thank you. God bless. Stay safe and we love you.